Hey, welcome back, Wisdom Family. We are in day 28 of 31 Days of Favor. And uh, today's lesson devotion is going to be centered on verse 1 of chapter 28. The wicked flees when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as lion. And what I'm going to talk about right now is about having a pure conscience, having a clean conscience. Um, you know, when the scripture says that the wicked flee when no one pursues, speaking about the fact that when you do wicked things to people, then your conscience begins to believe that there are adversaries and accusers who are rising up against you because you are expecting retaliation for something that you have done wrong. Um, and it is a, it's a big deal when you think about the fact that the conscience, if it's clear, it can give you boldness to face everything and to face every situation. You know, it says the wicked flee when no one pursues them. But the righteous are bold as a lion. That when you do things God's way, you do things the right way, then you have no reason to fear. You have a clear conscience. And what many of us don't understand about walking with God is that one of the goals of faith and one of the, re one of the things of, of when you obey the word of God and you put the word of God to work in your life, one of the things that it's supposed to do in your life is leave you with a clear conscience. Uh, there's another verse in the New Testament. I think it's 1 Timothy 1.19 when Paul wrote, holding on to faith and a good conscience which some have rejected and some have suffered shipwreck with regard to their faith. Uh, and one of the things that Paul is saying is that living this life of faith or walking by faith, obeying God and trusting his word, one of the things that you have to do to safeguard your faith is to also protect your conscience, protecting your conscience, that you're not supposed to do anything that conflicts or something that causes your conscience uh, to be impacted in a negative way. What is a conscience? Where is it? A conscience is, is the faculty within your spirit. It's a part of you along with your intuition. It's one of those spiritual abilities you have, just like your intuition, the ability to know something without knowing it or without learning it. Your conscience is your moral uh, it's like your moral GPS system that is something within you in which you know it's wrong. No one has to tell you it. It's, it's something that you just know within you um, that you know it's wrong. You shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't be going here. You shouldn't be wearing this. You shouldn't be listening to this. Your conscience is the place where you hear the voice of God clearly. And God will begin to speak to you in the area of your conscience. It's inside of your heart. Uh, and this is something that a lot of people are not taught about. People are not taught about their conscience. And this is why I wanted to talk about this. Uh, because if you go back again, the wicked flee when no one is pursuing them. They're imagining the worst case scenario. They're imagining that there's going to be backlash. Whenever you, whenever you do what's wrong, whenever you do something that, that opposes God's will, God's word, and God's conviction, because what happens is, is that what your conscience does is that it brings, it brings about a conviction inside of your heart regarding what you should do or what you shouldn't do. And so, for example, this subject of the conscience was so important that when Paul was addressing um, one of the churches in the New Testament, he talked about not judging people by what they eat or judging people by what they decide to drink um, because of the fact that the law, what the law did was that the law forced people 
to do things that oppose their conscience. Whereas now, because God lives on the inside of us, we ought to learn how to allow our conscience to be able to be a guide in which we know what we can or cannot do. So there, is, there were examples in the New Testament where some people felt like it was okay to eat certain foods and another group of Christians felt like it wasn't okay. And what Paul instructed was that, hey, let every man be commended to their own conscience. Don't judge a person because of what they feel convicted about eating or drinking. But he says, let everyone be handed over to their own conscience, their own personal convictions. And this is a powerful New Testament truth that so many believers today are totally clueless of. This is that freedom that we're talking about, that we, that we have in Christ, that God lives in each and every one of us, and he will tell you what's okay for you, what's not okay for you. So we talk about people trying to convince others of their own convictions that let's say if God was to tell, you know, I heard about in churches where their past, where pastors would tell people they can't go to the movie theater. And so they, it's not a biblical precept. It's not something that the scriptures talk about, but maybe this person had a conviction and in his conscience, he didn't feel right about going to the movies and then began to tell everybody else, it's not okay to go to the movies. Whereas others have didn't have that conviction. I don't have that conviction. I feel free to watch any movie I want. But when I do feel a conviction, I don't watch it. But I don't feel any wrong, anything wrong with going to a movie theater. And so when we are, we, we are, we are teaching people to learn how to um, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit on the inside of them, we have to give people the freedom to be able to make decisions that that align A, with the Word of God, and then B, that align with what their conscience is sensing, what their conscience is feeling. You know, so holding on to faith and a good conscience, a good conscience, a, a healthy conscience, a clear conscience, the teaching of righteousness is the only teaching that actually gives you the boldness to be able to trust your own conscience. Because if you believe that you are wicked, if you believe that, you know, there's a, there's a verse in the Old Testament that we still throw around today that is not consistent with what Jesus accomplished for us at the cross. That is that the heart is desperately wicked above all things. That was true in the Old Covenant, but under the New Covenant, the Bible says that God gave us a new heart and a new mind. And so we have to trust that that really happened and that our hearts are not desperately wicked. And in fact, God lives in our heart. You know, the Bible says that with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So if I have not believed unto righteousness yet, then I don't believe that I am righteous. Then that means I can't trust my conscience, which means that I'm not going to be able to follow God in a pure way. And Paul says your faith will be shipwrecked if you don't know how to have a healthy conscience. That can only happen if you understand your righteousness in Christ. So you got to learn, you got to grow in righteousness. And that's one of the things I emphasize at Hungry for God Church. I keep I, I emphasize the teaching of righteousness, that we are righteous by faith. It's a free gift. Righteousness is not what you have. You're not, you don't have to behave right to get right, but you believe right to become right. And you believe in the finished work of Christ, that he died to make you right with God. And it's as simple as receiving that by faith. And once you accept that reality, you understand that now you are right with God and you can become bold. And the Bible says you will become as bold as a lion, that you will be able to be bold in life, bold in the pursuit of your dreams, bold in the pursuit of your happiness. And you have a new heart, a heart that is aligned with God's will so that your conscience will be able to, to steer you in times when let's say you don't know what's right or wrong, you just listen to what's right for you inside of your own heart. And, there's, and the word of God should confirm what your conscience is sensing. So there is nothing in you that you should ever, there's no moment in your life when you should ever live with a, a um, uncertainty about what to do. Or let me put it this way. 
if you do something and you have a guilty conscience or a guilty feeling about it, then most likely you shouldn't be doing it. If you feel guilty about it and you're, you're con you don't feel right and you're conscious about it, then don't do it. And it might be something someone else feels comfortable with, but it, that's their conscience. But everybody has a different conviction based upon their destiny, based upon their calling, and based on where God is taking them. And so I want to encourage you to grow up in the teaching of righteousness. Over at Hungry for God, um, we have a lot of teachings on there. If you want to hear more, we can send you some. Um, but I just want you to continue to understand that your conscience is extremely important. If you're walking around believing somebody's going to come after you, something bad is going to happen to you, then most likely you don't understand how right you are with God. Because when you're right with God, you understand that no weapon formed against you can prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment against you, you shall condemn it. For this is the heritage of the righteous. And that's who you are in Christ. All right. So that's all for this day. And I'll see you in day 29.